Okay, so we have to talk about the insane news that just came out of Kim's workshop. None of people are talking about this, but it is genuinely massive. Like, Warhammer is never going to be the same after this. It's arguably the biggest news in Games Workshop history. I'm astounded that they've done this. Okay, so for context, last weekend Games Workshop announced a brand spanking new edition of Warhammer Kill Team. You know Kill Team. It's the game where one player controls a bunch of sentries and the other has to sneak past no, wait, no. That's Kill Team 2004, the edition that I mostly played. Ah, the endless march of death grows ever closer. Hey, look, it's back when Games Workshop actually encouraged converting your own characters to make them look unique. How the times have changed. And Kill Team has changed too. Now it's a competitively minded skirmish war game with a lot less customization. And it has been pretty successful. The game gets plenty of model kits and it has a whole dedicated community. That's pretty sizable. And frankly, the game doesn't really seem like it needs a new edition. Or at least Games Workshop don't seem to think so. Because during the announcement stream for the new edition, they basically said that there's no need for a new edition. A roll the clip. What we've done is we've looked at the core rules from the previous edition and we thought, we're pretty happy with this. Okay, why are we doing this again? Oh, right, you yeah, have money. <laughs> Silly me. Gotta sell another big FOMO box, am I right? You know, it's year number three after all. But this wouldn't be a Discourse Minis video if I didn't disagree with Games Workshop, because actually, personally, I think there's a lot to improve on for Kill Team. Seriously, a new edition isn't going to go amiss, because the game really needs a lot of work. For example, the line of sight rules are notoriously cumbersome and awkward, and they have generated a thousand trillion different threads from new people asking about how it all works on Reddit. And that's a quagillion more than the number of Urukai that Sarah created for his conquest of Rohan, FYI, just for those counting. So yeah, if Games Workshop could fix the line of sight and the cover rules, that would be great. But that's not all. Of course, there's also my nemesis, which I'm excited to announce. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Yes, it took us a while to get here, but it's been done. The nightmare is finally over. You know, I've advocated for a lot of stuff on this channel. Free rules, better writing, accessible products, all apparently very divisive asks in the Warhammer community. But one of the most important, most crucial things I've ever taken a dignified and firm stand on, one that will echo down the annals of history, putting me alongside great liberators like Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, John Brown, Moses, and Stevie Wonder, has been this. This battle. Nothing has been more important than this. And I'm happy to announce that Games Workshop have finally taken heed and acquiesced. They have removed mandatory widgets and arbitrary shapes as units of measurement and are going back to numbers for the new edition of Kill Team. Hallelujah! Yeah, okay, new edition. Off to a good start. Obviously though, we're gonna need to see more about how it plays and how they're actually going to do the new teams though, because the current edition or the old version of Kill Team was very controversial at launch as Games Workshop took away a ton of customization from the game and pushed all the original kill teams into a big compendium book that cost like 55 bucks and then they threw gasoline all over it and lit it on fire because every single team in that was absolute trash and then they started selling much better teams in bespoke boxes with a price increase. Yeah, a very cynical and derisive way to treat your community. This was so bad in fact that it even got Uncle Adam extremely extremely irate, and it's rare for him to get annoyed publicly. At least we know that underneath that cool, calm exterior lies the beating heart of an angry madman ready to snap at any moment. But it looks like this new edition won't even support the existing companion teams anymore, so I guess that book was just a useless expense. Feel kind of bad for anybody who, you know, has a kill team that they really enjoy playing with that might have been based on models that were from Warhammer 40k. Speaking of Games Workshop, just shoot off a giant FOMO launch box of the new edition of Kill Team 2 that's coming with brand new teams. This box has been revealed to be called Hive Storm and Finally, we've got a skirmish war game all about fighting in a hive. Have I seen this before? But this is the box and it looks pretty big. There are two new teams in here. First, we get the new, sorry, I mean new Tempestus Scions who are 10 year old models with a, with an upgrade sprue. At least that's what I thought at first, but actually these are brand new miniatures and we can tell because half of them are standing on tactical rocks. Yep, that, that's a modern GW release, all right. But 
conceptually, they're just copy and paste retreads of the previous Tempesta Scions. So we've seen them before, they're not too exciting. Still, the design holds up. Tempesta Scions look pretty cool. I'm someone who grew up surrounded by Kazurkin, so having generic Stormtrooper models still feels a bit novel to me. Again, slow march of death, yada yada, peace process was good, whatever. And the poses look good. GW have thankfully avoided the tippy toe look of Space Marine jump troops. I like these poses even better, even if they are very static and monopose. The big difference with the existing Tempesta Scion kill team is that I guess these are actually still relevant, but also they come with little jump backpacks or like grav shoots and a little robot sentry boy, so that's kind of neat. I do wish though that these were Elysian drop troops or even the Harkoni Warhawks, that would have been badass. So I'm a little bit disappointed there. On the other hand though, the vest bits in here are very undisappointing. It's genuinely nice to see these little bug boys return. Vespids have been totally redesigned. They look a little bit like knockoff Geonosians now, ready to fight on behalf of the Separatists rather than the Tie. In fact, they look so much so that if Games Workshop was Asmodee, they'd probably be sending cease and desist letters right about now. Though overall, the bodies are cool, they look sadly monopose, and because they're kill team models, they 100% will be. I really like the helmets and the guns though, I think those are a cool melding of Tie tech with a bug's life. Still, I always preferred ants. They're, uh, their antenna attached to their, their their heads look a bit more streamlined now. If you look at the old art of Vespids, they had a very weird square antenna, like a like a like a strong jawline, and their helmets used to follow that design. The new antenna are way more slender, matching the rest of their body. It's just a lot less boxy overall, and I think that works well. I'm not really sure why I'm so obsessed with antenna all of a sudden. I guess the antenna is basically the bug equivalent of a. <laughs> Still though, why aren't they blue? Where's my blue ball? Boys, come on, bring back Eiffel 65. God damn it, the 90s never died. That's unrelated to Vespas. I just had a weird sexual thing with their alien mascot as a tween. I'd like to return to that time, please. Of course, the big unspoken truth of Kill Team is that it is now the vehicle by which Games Workshop released new units and squads for 40k outside of uh, giant FOMO boxes. Ironically, often within giant FOMO boxes just for a different game, which, you know, is fine in theory, but my problem is that, well, you know, the FOMO boxes exist, but but also kill team releases often come as very monopose because they're being designed for a skirmish game where in theory different poses aren't that important but in 40k when you've got an army of these guys actually yeah being able to customize the poses very 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 important or else your army looks really really bad like the sanguinary guard on the front of the combat patrol yeah we can tell games workshop that there's only three poses for these models you can't just rearrange them in different places to try and trick us and these are digitally sculpted to the extent that they are a bit of a pain to build when compared to model kits even as recent as six years ago. Again, slow march of death, people. Still, there is a huge problem with this box that absolutely kills my interest in it. Something so devastatingly awful that people are gonna... Wait, do you hear that? Oh god, no, not this again. Ah! Yeah! That's right, I'm a pirate now, and you can be too with Port Royal, the hit new pirate war game from Firelock Games. Port Royal recaptures the magic of tabletop adventure games like Mordheim, where you'll get to build your very own scurvy crew to do battle for plunder in the ruins, jungles, and plantations of Jamaica, using a scenario generator to guarantee that no two battles are the same. And even when the fighting is over, the game doesn't stop because it's the pirate it's life for you now, boy. Between battles, you'll be recording the fate of your characters, potentially suffering injuries, or even discovering the most coveted of treasures. And just right too, to the victor go the spoils, says I. And with Port Royal, there'll be plenty of spoils and more. For though every battle on the tabletop is another opportunity for great glory or devastating defeat, the true treasure will be the tales ye reminisce with your mates down at the old tavern. Retelling the story of how lowly lone survivor Shipman Pegleg Pete against all odds managed to defeat the dread pirate Billy Bones and three of his most deadly pirate lieutenants in hand to hand combat. The odds were insurmountable, but by God it happened, and by God you were there to witness it. And even if you have no crew to call your own, the game includes solo and co op modes, so there's really no excuse to not be set in seal right now. 
Why? Embrace that salt sea air, enjoy a different flavor, and check out Port Royal in the link below, because the Kickstarter may be over, but late pledges are open. Don't miss out. Click the link and get in on some pirate action. yeah And thanks to Farlog Games for sponsoring today's video on this beard. Would have preferred not to have lost my eye, though. yeah Okay, I think they're gone. I need to get some ninjas in here to sort those guys out. So there is a huge problem with this box that is terrible. And it's hard to miss. It's the biggest part of the box set. It's the goddamn terrain. What the hell is going on with Games Workshop terrain in these boxes? And this isn't the first box to be like this. This is really becoming a trend with Kill Team. And really, honestly, a bunch of other releases from Games Workshop now. Okay, so what's wrong with the terrain? Well, it's not new. It's a re-release. Even though it's kitted out to make it look like it's new, this Hive Storm terrain is just the Battle Zone Manufactorum Sanctum Administratus Manufactorum Subclaster Manufactorum Storage fan. Now try saying that five times with a mouthful of resin. And this follows in the footsteps of boxes like Chalnath that came with very dull terrain that are just like whatever. These types of generic Imperial terrain should just be permanently on the store, sold separately. They should not be getting added to these big kill team boxes simply to inflate the price of otherwise just two squads that you typically get inside. And really, as an ask, Hive Storm, as a box set, it just feels like two new teams, an erratic rulebook, and a bunch of terrain that we have seen before that should be sold separately. The terrain is just thrown into this box to push the price up. Really, the entry here, the, the FOMO launch box for Kill Team, it should probably be something closer to like 50 pounds, 60 pounds for two teams. Wouldn't that be a much easier accessible entrance point for the game? But regardless of price, the train in here just sucks. It's really boring. Do we really need another big massive box set filled with generic Imperial terrain? They could have made this way more exciting by putting in a little bit more effort and creating something new, like a, like a Toy City terrain. That would have been cool. That would have been really refreshing and thematically matched back to Octaris and its Orc terrain. It would have actually tempted me to pick it up so that I could make a brand new battlefield because I've already got way too much Imperial terrain and there are so many third parties parties that you can get cheaper versions of this product, but better. And I joked about it earlier, but this is literally the second skirmish war game from Games Workshop that has been designed and sold right now around skirmish battles inside a hive. This is Hive Storm. We just had Hive Secondus. We're probably going to get a new FOMO Kill Team box set soon called Hive Thirdus with the boarding patrol terrain in there as if it's new and two perfunctory box exclusive kill teams like Gretchen versus Administratum Intern. Okay, actually, that does go hard. I would probably buy that. So considering that none of the terrain is new, I hope that it is at least cheaper than Octarius. But that's very unlikely because this is Games Workshop. And while it sucks that the contents of this box are probably going to be locked inside here for a period of time, at the very least, Games Workshop have announced that the new rules are going to be free. This follows in the footsteps of like Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar, but actually, there's been a massive change, something that I hope will move over to Warhammer. Hammer 40k and Age of Sigmar proper because Games Workshop have gone further than ever before. They're now including QR codes in every Kill Team squad box linking to full and up-to-date rules. And yeah, that's awesome. Firstly, it's great. It's one of the main things I've been advocating for for at least three years on this channel. Maybe someone over at GWHQ watches. Hello, I see you. Why aren't you subscribed? You probably should because if I can see you, I can hunt you. But obviously, this is Games Workshop, so it can't all be Guinness and Potatoes. They've also revealed kill zones as a compulsory purchase, and there's upgrade packs and card packs and more tat for seal too. So in that sense, the rules for the game might be free, but the ability to play it isn't really, because you're gonna need a whole bunch of this stuff. And okay, okay, I'm not expecting Games Workshop to simply cease making any money at all. I understand they, they, they do wanna make some money, but I mean, they're likely gonna sell a Kill Team Essentials pack, like they did for the last edition, and this'll come with a bunch of extremely overpriced widgety doohickeys, cardboard tokens, and some extremely basic terrain for just slightly less money than the cost of the entire starter set for the Carnivale miniature game that comes to terrain, miniatures, rulebook, unit cards, and oh yeah, that's right! Tokens and rulers are included in this starter set for free, because get this, they are incidentals that shouldn't cost anything. Because after all, as a miniature war game company, 
you make your money on the miniatures. But without a doubt, the most shocking part of this entire announcement, one that I think has gone totally under the radar of most people and should be getting talked about way, way more in the community, is the announcement that this new edition of Kill Team will be playable in solo and co-op. That means that you can face off against an AI opponent with your miniatures and you're not going to need another player to actually you know, play with your minis. Lonely Heart Club's welcome. Get ready to play with yourself. This is huge. Why are people not dancing in the street after this announcement? Games Workshop have lost their mind. They've never done this before. It's super exciting. Get hyped, people. Come on. Solo and co-op play has been a growing market in war games for like the last five to ten years, and I've been advocating for it a ton. Again, Games Workshop are definitely watching, and I never thought that Games Workshop would really ever embrace it. Games Workshop have only ever done this stuff in Warhammer quest which really isn't that good a system both curse city and blackstone fortress have major design flaws or simplistic introductory games that don't quite contain the war game experience like dark tide that tend to be sold in big box stores and are just way too simplistic to be interesting okay maybe don't get too hyped with that track record i guess but personally from my perspective i think it's fantastic to have a way to introduce people to miniature war gaming that isn't simply tabling them in the first turn hey noob why don't you follow the meta but even more from my perspective perspective, anything that gets folk playing with their miniatures more and seeing them as game pieces rather than simply collectibles is always better. And solo and co-op games are great for that because it's the only option that lots of people have to actually engage with their miniatures beyond simply painting them. And I hope this actually works out really well for Games Workshop. I hope they expand it into Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar because co-op games can be a ton of fun. And I'm really excited to see the very first actual Warhammer cooperative solo game. That sounds really good. But you don't have to wait for Kill Team to release to find out why co-op and solo play is so fun. There are tons of co-op and solo games on the market already. Games Workshop are actually pretty late to the boat here, and lots of these games are free and compatible with Warhammer miniatures. I'd personally recommend Stargrave, Frostgrave, Rangers of Shadow Deep, Fallout Wasteland Warfare, Death Ship 1, 5 Parsecs from Home When Nightmares Come, almost everything from Snarling Badger Studios, Death Wizards, Majestic 13, Space Station Zero, they're all good. And of course, the upcoming Port Royal by Firelock Games. Thanks for sponsoring the video, by the way. And if you want to sponsor this content for yourself and get access to live streams and hang out with me personally and see my live potato eating, then check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash discourse minis. I also like to show off some miniature war game recommendations. And if you've been following me there, then all these names would have been old hat to you. And I need your help to continue covering RPGs and war games from a consumer advocate perspective. I can only do it with your help. So if you agree with better games, cheaper games, and more games, then come on aboard. And a massive thanks to my patrons, especially CryptoKev. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.